Okay, so uh, we were, let's go back to our share screen here. I wanted to zoom in on this area. We were talking about this flow convergence point on the St. Croix River. Now, let's back out so you can see here that this, where this is coming from, let's go right on, pull on out here so you can see Lake Superior. And that Lake Superior was occupied by a glacial lobe. And there was a flow that came down Lake through Lake Superior, and you can actually see the flow path right here. You can see there's a very low profile streamlined erosional residual. Let me take off the hydrocation so you can see it clear right here, right? And you can come down, you can see the boundaries of the flow form. And while the, the flow is here, you got a picture, it's a sheet flood, it's spread out, it's moving across the land, it's fairly shallow, it's moving fairly slow. But then what it does is it begins to exploit the zone of weakness, an area that it can erode a little faster than the rest for whatever reason, whether it's discontinuities within the water flow or in the landscape or some combination. What happens is the sheet flood becomes concentrated, becomes channelized. And we can see that happening right here. You see coming down this you would have had a sheet flood across here, and then it begins to get focused into the channel. And then what it does is that as it excavates and deepens the channel, more and more of the water that's flowing on the sub upland is now captured into that ever deepening, ever widening channel. At some point in the process, the channel may have now captured the entire flow that was originally spread out and shallow is now moving in this concentrated channel. And that's what we see. That's the process that we can kind of see right here. And it comes down. So the really increasing the velocity and like you described before, the erosional potential. Yes. Yes. Were you going to show some pictures of the? Models? Yes, I am. Okay. So. Good Looking age. back at this zone of flow constriction right here, we have the interstate park. And let's see here. Ah, yes, here is on this interstate park. Now, I used to place I used to go as a kid, right? And certainly one of the things that stimulated my interest in matters of this, we'll jump down. Oh, yeah, the okay, we'll just. Here, I'll read. The potholes at the St. Croix Dolls have their origins in a tale of fire and ice. They are carved in a dark volcanic rock called basalt, which erupted as lava 1.1 billion years ago. The basalt is related to lava flows that lined the north shore of Lake Superior. Let's jump down. During the last 2 million years, glaciers have advanced from the Ontario region through the Lake Superior Basin, repeatedly covering the Taylor's Falls area, which is also the St. Croix Falls area. About 12,000 years ago, near the end of the most recent glaciation, meltwater collected at the southwestern edge of a glacial lobe as the lobe receded into the Superior Basin. The water formed a growing glacial Lake Duluth. When Glacial Lake Duluth drained, great floods flowed southward through the St. Croix River Valley, forming Glacial River St. Croix. The largest of these floods was perhaps a hundred times the volume of modern ones, uh, actually even more than that. At this time, Glacial Lake Duluth drained only via Glacial River St. Croix because I still block the Superior Basin's eastern outlet to the lower Great Lakes. Rapid erosion of drainage spillways around the edge of Glacial Lake Duluth released tremendous amounts of water in a short time. These torrents of meltwater readily cut through the glacial sediments and the sandstone deepening the St. Croix Valley. Fierce rapids developed where the rushing current encountered the hard, resistant basalt. The rapids increased the speed and turbulence of the water, and a heavy sediment load provided powerful abrasive action 
all necessary to carve potholes into the basalt. So potholes commonly occur behind the base of a large boulder or other flow dis obstruction. They are made when turbulent water forms an eddy or whirlpool strong enough to swirl pebbles and cobbles around in one spot. There, the swirling stones grind a cylindrical hole down into the bedrock. So, uh, the, as it says here, final statement, and this is at the entrance to the interstate park where you can see this erosion. It says the exceptional depth and abundance of potholes here attest to the enormous power of Glacial River St. Croix. So we'll go through a series of pictures here where you can begin to see the potholes that are drilled into the basalt. Oops. So you, you said earlier, but just to reiterate, because you said it's interstate park, uh, the St. Croix River is the border between Minnesota and Wisconsin right there. Right. So the park actually is on both sides of the river. It's both on the Wisconsin side and the Minnesota side. There we go. Ah, there we go. Potholes in the basalt. Wow. Let's get some here with some. So this is this is the terrace level, the the, the that's the first level above the river. Um, yeah. So here's here's showing. Here's the sort of the terrace, this shelf, and the potholes. This this basalt shelf. So the potholes are eroded into the top of this shelf right here. Yeah, the St. Croix River of today is tiny compared to what it was when the glaciers melted. At that time, it covered the spot where you're now standing. And of course, you're standing, what, 70 or 80 feet above the river. The final retreat of the glaciers created tremendous amounts of water as the great sheets of ice melted. Lake Superior, or Glacial Lake Duluth, it was, as it was called, filled to a depth hundreds of feet greater than it is today. It overflowed to the south, and the flood of water cut the valley of today's Brule River and entered the St. Croix. So let's go through here. Yeah, this is, this is the basalt outcrop. You can see a, one of the potholes at the base there. Let's, okay, this will give you a sense of how big some of them are. And they're typically 50 to 80 feet deep. Okay, this kind of shows you the shelf. Let's see. Here. Wow, man. Now, notice the texture of the surface of this rock. This is rock that has been scoured. And, and if you look, you'll even begin to see like little, what we would say, incipient potholes. See this right here, kind of the circular little depression in the rock? So if, if you had a continuous flow over here for any extended length of time beyond what it was, it would have continued drilling more potholes. And here you can see trees growing up out of the potholes. Let's, there's Graham and Santa. Let's get down to, yeah, here I am. I'm down in the bottom of one of the potholes. Oh yeah, God. and there's, there's Graham Hancock. So this was the last site that we visited over this two-week period or slightly less than two-week period over which we took Graham on this tour of mega flood features that he wrote about in Magicians of the Gods. So it gives you a sense of the enormity of these potholes. Okay, yeah, here you can look down into one you're seeing a person standing down here. So what you've got a picture now is that over the top of this thing, the water is running about 200 feet deep. It's probably shooting through this flume at 50 to 60 miles an hour. And in this incredible intense turbulence, you have this vorticular motion, this intense eddy-like motion that literally is like an underwater tornado. And it's picking up sediment and it's using that sediment like a drill, and it's just burrowing down right into the hard basalt. And of course, the modern river, these are, again, we're looking at fossil features. Features like this are not being produced today on planet Earth. <laughs>